hello and welcome to Critical Tumble, where a bunch of longtime friends and internet nerds transcend geography through the power of Discord to play Dungeons and Dragons. And while we can transcend geography, we cannot transcend health problems. Uh, so, unfortunately, we are absent in Ethan. Um, but we were stalling anyway, like I said, so, yeah. But previously... Um, Previously, the mess in Anbeer is about all I really need to say at this point. Um, attempting to free the Protector Azamar from their uh, helicopter parent house arrest by the local Scourge Azamar. Um, various attempts were made to get this all to stop, and it did eventually kind of end by... A massive melee and uh, an interruption by an ancient gold dragon, a.k.a. here is that the governor of the province. Also, Ziriel. Which, you know, when you have a solar and an ancient gold dragon turn up, things stop pretty damn quickly. With a whole lot of holy shit from the uh, agnostic atheist uh, uh, contingent over there because <laughs> there are no atheists in foxholes and precious few agnostics when a literal angel is staring down at them from 12 feet up either way uh, the protector Azamar were freed uh, those that went fallen because they were being assholes to people uh, have a lot of making up to do and uh, Alice A is uh, out, awake, and uh, not with her heart having been carved out of her chest. That's a whole thing. There's various other bits and pieces uh, as side notes to that. But for the moment, they're getting their celebrations in now because when they're done in Anbeer, they still have like a day or two because... Um, wanting to at least see Hazel's uh, biological father and Barnabas's second date with Shuri, the head secretary of, uh, of, of Behirzet, um, they're going to be traveling the rest of the provinces to uh, explain to the governors exactly what the fuck happened. And apparently they are getting, uh, they're getting Crea Bendis over with first. Just on the basis that, A, it would probably insult her if she was left for last, and B, well, you know, you, 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 you kind of have to eat your, uh, your vegetables before you can have anything nicer most of the time. Or, you know, the dentist office, uh, cavities filling first, then lollipop. I try with the metaphors, uh, but they do not work. Anyway, point being that after sending four uh, orphaned Azamar and a whole bunch of uh, farming bits and pieces, uh, as well as uh, a a a few a few books and a tiramisu from Clarity, um, over to Hearth Home, which involved. Uh, two small goats and two sheep in the hearth home living room. <laughs> the Cupcake Coterie are heading to apparently the best restaurant on the continent called The World Over. I am going to assume because you're all... Okay, you're not all very bright, but some of you are pretty damn intelligent. Um... I'm assuming somebody asked how to find the place. Oops. Asking for directions would have been required. Yes. Yeah. Uh, while, while heading in that general direction, uh, they had a little time to kill, so Alice decided that uh, going via the street of love and beauty to uh, at least show Barnabas uh, you know, where the bathhouse is. Um, and yeah, it's this... Uh, big spirited away ish kind of uh, building thank you i will definitely be paying that a visit 
assistant and Darvin is just like I said, I will escort you. I I couldn't have everything all at once, so I've I've got some stuff to explore in there. <laughs> all right. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> wow. And yes, yeah, so togged up all in, in y'all's finery, you come to um it's a fairly unassuming door. Um large enough for Barnabas to fit into without too much problem, but you'd think the best restaurant on the continent would uh, be more than just a, a pretty but relatively simple oak door with one of those little tiny uh, uh, awnings, the little semicircle ones, uh, just with the world over printed on it quite small. We're about to get hit with the biggest surprise in existence and or I don't know. Something is going to be the bit that demonstrates why this is the best place in the continent and it's not going to be the appearance. It never is the appearance from what I remember. Well, probably not the outside appearance. But, uh, Do say don't judge a book by its cover. Besides, if it's if, if it's that good, it's probably uh, probably doesn't need the uh, advertising of a massive uh, mm. front. Okay. And Alice being the uh, the the particularly intrepid amongst you, opens the door, and you don't really get a look in because it's kind of dark in there. And she just steps in and f it, in, oh. into the black. <laughs> Oh, I have a guess. That's I'm following. <laughs> and Hazel zoom in right, uh, right behind her. All right. Okay, let's go. One right after Alrighty. Hazel. <laughs> Barnabas sort of looks at everybody, shrugs, and goes in. Yeah. Well, whoever's <laughs> left, because it's like Alice goes first, and then Hazel, and certain looks are exchanged, and I screw it. Girlfriend, <laughs> wife, new <laughs> And yeah, what you come out into is picture the most opulent hotel foyer you have ever seen. Oh no. There is, I mean, it's beautifully done um, patterned uh, carpet on the floor. Uh, high vaulted ceiling. There's a Copper Dragonborn off in the corner uh, playing a piano. Uh, <laughs> little big vases of even bigger flowers and these little, uh, you know, those kind of almost reverse booths where it's you've got a little cushy thing in the as a core and then seats go around. So you got a few of those around, so it's massive ornate chandeliers, uh, pianist, and various, uh, and there's not a whole lot of people in there at the moment, but there do seem to be a few very well-dressed individuals uh, standing by a very long fancy bar over uh, against one wall and having a quick chat. At the far end of this cavernous room is a uh, archway. You're at this point you're far enough away from it you can't tell whether that's another uh, portal like the one you just apparently stepped through or uh, it's just dimmer beyond But apparently this is some place you can wait if you've turned up early for your appointment. Mm. Well, I can... You sure beats any of the parties I've been to. Uh -huh. Also... Well, to be fair, that's uh, no no offense to you, uh, Ava, because Baron's view has been uh, locked in in 
stagnation for a very long time from the sounds of it. So you're not going to find as much opulence there because I don't reckon anybody really knows how to do it except the people who do it with magic and they get frowned on a lot. I mean, it's not going to be the case forever, but they've got some catching up to do. Um. Here's hoping what, what we've been doing will hit the jump start button and feed it and feed the uh, homeland some agra flavored go juice. Well, currently we've just thrown a bit of Anbeer at Goldendale, I think, for anything more than that. Uh, we might have to make a few suggestions. Good thing we're going to be going to every single location over time, right? Yeah, except after that we pro we'd probably have to go and make sure that the people in Baronsvere actually do the things. Anyway... Oh, no. I, th I think I think us standing in the middle of this room is getting us some looks from the guys at the bar. So, in that general direction. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and it does take a couple of minutes to cross the room. This is a very large room, and you get to a little podium, and uh, again, very well groomed half orc. Uh, for those of you who were uh, uh, born in uh, the Elven Wild or Baronsvere, or are more used to half orcs being among the gruel than anything else, this is still a little weird. <laughs> but yeah, really fancy maitre d'. And uh, looks at you all and goes, ah, the governor's table, I take it. Uh, need that be else, yes. Right. And uh, pulls out a long, flat sheet, I guess, of what appears to be uh, obsidian. It's not very thick. It's about that, but kind, kind of like a, kind of like a tablet, but obviously just a piece of stone. If you could each put your thumb on this. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's going to follow through. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Flitty is just like, do I do I put my thumb on the thing? Uh, you actually put your entire paw on the thing. Your thumbs are a little small for, for a proper reading. Okay. Beep. <laughs> and now the... Uh, you get perfect fingerprints that glow in various colors for a second and then seem to sink into the tablet and are gone. If you'd like, come with me. And steps into, yeah, it appears just, again, just darkness. I'll say it's just in. Don't question it, just roll with it. Don't question it, just roll with it. Don't question it, just roll with it. Yeah. It, roll with it. yeah. <laughs> yep. What you have, yeah, what you have at the other side of that is, um, it's kind of like being in a very large, very ornate greenhouse. The ceiling is domed and glass, as are there aren't that many walls, but those that are are glass, and they are overlooking. Uh, the sort of a forest glade setting, um, which this cannot be outside anywhere you know because it's fucking winter and this is not winter. The floor itself has little bridges to get across some bits because a bit of the bit of the lake is being guided into streams to let. Uh, couple of swans just cruising around the place and in the very center is a very large gazebo with a string quartet set up in one corner and at the moment there aren't many couples 
in the center of it, but there are a couple of couples dancing. Apparently, the that's part of what the gazebo is for. But yeah, you're getting string quartet uh, and incredibly fancy spot. The Major D leads you to kind of a platform off to one side, uh, and it's mostly just held up by the kind of glass architecture that you would recall from uh, from the Shrine of Pelor and Egref. But thankfully everything is smoked enough that you, you're not seeing too clearly down. But large table. But clearly this is some place that uh, the governor... Uh, takes important visitors at. And they are very specific about the chairs. Um, you actually see a couple of dwarves uh, taking a couple of the chairs away where they've left ones that are more comfortable for uh, individuals with tails or wings, as for example. And, uh... Reminds me of home. In a weird way. <laughs> Reiterate previous statements. Don't question it, just roll with it. Don't question it, just roll with it. I mean, the, the, the platform you're on does give you a wonderful view of the space that you're in. And, uh... The Mater D apparently is starting with the uh, drinks menus. And as each of... When you're first getting them, that sheet of paper appears to be blank. But when you put hands on it, it shimmers for a minute, and then writing happens. And each of you apparently has something a little different. Some of you share menu items, but there's enough differences between each one that you kind of got to, well, I mean, Alice is looking at it and going, <laughs> oh, man, I think I see why. The the thumbprint mm -hmm. thing, they've tailored mm -hmm. the menus. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Nifty little tricks. I'd say something like calling this place swanky, but that ain't the word. <laughs> Uh, well, given we're all remarking, it is remarkable. Mm. Okay, we're not remarking at this <laughs> point. <laughs> I mean, Hazel, do I have to repeat your yeah. own words back at you? Don't question it. Just roll. It, it, this is Hazel's just voice. Roll with it. Yeah, I'm going to use the actor feed. God damn it! Don't question it. Just roll with it. Don't question it. Just roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna echo her own words back at her, commit to the bit. <laughs> fair. That is entirely fair. <laughs> Not hearing you, Lindira. <laughs> ah, there we go. No, gone what? again. Oh. I don't know why it keeps going out in, in and out, but why did it? I, I'm going to question it. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> you do like you to know, see how things work. So. Yeah, I mean, by what criteria? How do you get from my thumbprint what I want to have for dinner? I don't understand. What What does it say? Well, I figure, and this is just a guess on my part, but uh, you hear things, you work in places. Um, it basically gives a read of your aura, which kind of speaks to you as a person. So we probably get, at the very least, things like um, you know, whether you, you maybe it's uh, whether you prefer spicy or sweet. It probably reads your species. So if you have any species specific dietary needs or wants stuff like that 
it might, depending on exactly what you know, people's auras, etc., say about them, um, you know, might even look at birthplace and read from there what kinds of things might appeal. Hmm. Clarity's staring at her thumb for a little bit, and it's just like... How <laughs> So, or how does it come from my thumb? I think that's just the easiest and uh, uh, most compact way of getting an aura read onto something that somebody in the kitchen can have a look at. Because your aura is everywhere, but what part of your body do you want touching a thing that's going to read it? <laughs> I'm just because whatever sending stone or scrying widget or whatever enchantments on that just happens to read by touch so it do probably doesn't even have to be thumb you can just smack your whole hand on it well i mean what with with flitty they had to put the whole hand because just one digit wasn't going to be enough but i mean they weren't going to do anything more intimate than that at the, and at the very least, most of the people who are coming to eat here do have thumbs. See, really the thumb part that's getting me, it's the whole, where does, how, how does that, how do you read it from, how, where's the aura and how does it? It must be some sort of thing, the way detect magic detects magic <laughs> around you. Yeah, well, then. <laughs> probably something along those lines that point we get into the details of like what subtype of magic and and all those mechanics and the, the the sketchings of the of the magic circles and the lines and lines and lines of stuff you've got in your sketchbook and you know if you want something a bit more in the realm of the physical uh, probably reading various things about us through, like, uh, sweat, little flakes of dead skin, stuff like that. I mean, I guys... I have to study it. I mean, guys, what do you think <laughs> dust is? Very true. Well, than that. Uh, I was more addressing the uh, yeah, dubious looks I was getting from that. Let's just be glad it wasn't toes or anything that's covered by clothing most of the time. And leave it at that, mm -hmm. shall we? <laughs> and that it wasn't a blood thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I know... I suppose... I know I you're... Suppose would... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I suppose it would sort of ruin the fanciness if you just face-planted yourself on the thing. Mm. <laughs> It'd be, it'd be hard for large parties, too, because I think everybody at a table has to have the same spot. So maybe a table for one does that if they're <laughs> Hazel-esque. I don't know. <laughs> uh, imagine blood would be unsanitary for a place like this. Well, you'd hope so, but I don't know. Healing? I... It's a thing. Anyway. <laughs> and yeah, it, currently what you're getting is the uh, is, uh, cocktail menus. And those of you who have seen cocktail menus, there are a few of you. Even Farida has a couple of ideas, thanks to having been sent to the book Bow and Dragon on her own a uh, while back. Um, every cocktail that you thought Hmm, that sounds like it might be good. And a few you've never even heard of, but probably go along the same theme. So you get a choice of about a dozen. Hmm. The, the more sheltered you are, the fewer of them you actually recognize. <laughs> oh, dear. There's a note at the bottom that says uh, the, the, the wine will be selected to best enhance your meals. Mm. 
Well, all right then. So, is anybody starting with cocktails? Just to because Alice is going. I'm going to do this just because I want to see how well they get my tastes. Darwin is de- definitely yes. <laughs> And I just want to be surprised, so I'm going to pick something from the bundles of things I don't recognize on the list. And to be fair, you, like I say, you grew up on a farm, you probably don't remember half of what the uh, cocktail list at Basil Cell was, so uh, yep. <laughs> so a lot of it, it a lot of it looks kind of familiar, but you don't really remember, and it doesn't entirely say what's in them. Yeah, the only ones I, actually, I would actively recall is make good choices and... Uh, yeah, I don't think they have that one here. <laughs> and the fairy, and the one with the fairy dragon aura thing. Yeah, uh, they do not have a, a Feywild menu here. Yeah, so well, literally not, just not, to surprise me, not, for me. Not that kind of Feywild menu, uh, anyway, because uh, something, something, sparkle motion. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, technically. Um, Hazel gets something grenadine reddish pink and basically it's a strawberry daiquiri meets a cotton candy vodka. Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I went on the nuclear abomination category. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very good tasting nuclear abomination. It's just, that's the thing, because when Hazel's comes, Hazel's comes in big you know, champagne goblet kind of thing, but larger. Puts that down, and in it is a pile of reddish orange cotton candy and then pours uh, reddish orange liquid on top of that and the cotton candy dissolves into the whole thing and what you wind up with is um, an orange soda grenadine cotton candy kind of thing that somehow works yeah I'm very much vibing with this <laughs> he just there's an ex- there's first couple of tries are like wait what the heck is this wait wait what, what? trying to listen that's a whole other thing going on what is <laughs> happening right now <laughs> oh I think I understand what this is nope nope no I don't understand what this is <laughs> <laughs> but you're drinking it so you clearly like it so that that's okay yeah very good very overall good sign but I'm. Too stunned for proper words. Yeah, well, that that that's Alice say just going. Well, you're still drinking it, so that's fine. Expression continues to flip between delight and I am error. <laughs> <laughs> At least Ava the probably... delight's in there. Yeah. It would probably go with something fruit based if there is any. Oh, there there are definitely some that uh that 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 have a fruit based thing and what. I'm going to hand a fate this one. <laughs> yeah, what you end up with is something that has a very apple pie-ish sort of taste. It's an apple liqueur, cinnamon, and uh, brown sugar that's just a bit reminiscent of uh, the butteriness of a good crust, but it's liquid form. I have had this exact drink. I went to a steakhouse and got this exact drink. <laughs> I actually, I actually have a actually have a tea that tastes like that. It's uh, uh, chamomile, apple, vanilla, bit of cinnamon, uh, passiflora. It's a sleepy time thing, but uh, it's cinnamon, very nice, cinnamon, very relaxing. Well, it's it's that and eggy. Yep. <laughs> Barnabas will actually indulge his inner Hazel and goes with a cocktail that he's never heard before. Uh, okay. What he winds up with is a tiramisu martini. Ooh. That's an interesting one. <laughs> I've had this. 
This is, they are they are fantastic. It's 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 the sweetness of the mascarpone and the coffee liqueur and a little bit of chocolate liqueur and oh damn, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> funnily, funnily enough, Alice has wound up with the exact same thing. <laughs> Is that anything like the fudge? I'm sure there's a cocktail recipe book around here somewhere. Almost likely. Clarity's oh, looking for something... Kind of fizzy and fruity. Yeah. Um. You. What at the moment is Clarity's favorite fruit? Blueberry. I I had a feeling, but I thought I would ask. <laughs> what she winds up with is uh, the champagne flute filled with her. Light blue, fizzy. It's not just fizzing and bubbling. It's also sparkling when the bubbles hit the, uh, hit, the, hit, the hit the top of the uh, liquid, and it very much is a, a sweet blueberry hint of blue raspberry uh, champagne. And somehow you can taste the, uh, the the sugar of the glitter that's poof. Mm. Sparkle motion. Yeah, for Barnabas and Barnabas, Faraday, and uh, Clarity, because they are the they're, they're the ones that will read the everything. <laughs> there mm -hmm. are you're not really sure what the symbols mean, but there's little symbols next to uh, n next to each and every one of the bits on the list. Um, you do know that Clarity and if you look peer at Hazel's menu, because you're curious and you're like that, uh, Hazel's mm -hmm. have the same uh, the same little label next to them. Okay. What's this? I have no idea, but maybe it's to do with the uh, region. I mean, recipes always come from somewhere. Okay. Makes sense. Gotta be a way they organize it, right? You'd think. Yeah, you two have a lot of that particular symbol on, on your drinks menus. Is that mentioning symbols? I'd probably look at the one online to see if I can figure out what it means. Um, mm, that's gonna have to be a straight intelligence check, and your uh, your your target's a little high. Okay. <laughs> just curious. Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying there. It, it's their short. For, it's their shorthand. So mm. it's all about figuring out their shorthand. Right. <laughs> You're not really sure, but it's definitely less, uh, Hazel and Clarity seem to have, theirs is this, uh, little shimmery in various colors, butterfly kind of, uh, thing, and yours is... It really is just a circle in an off orange, and there's really nothing to let you know where that's from beyond definitely not where their sparkle motion shit came from. Hmm. Uh, the one that Barnabas and uh, Alice had came with a, a brighter orange, uh, more of a 
more of a pent pentagon pentagram thing pentagon five-sided thing then not a particularly uh, even one either I suppose we could ask the waiter if there's like a translations for all of this, or it might be proprietary, but who knows? I think it's just their. I think it's just their shorthand, and I think I think in their case, it's not so much that they desperately need to know; it's that they want to figure it out because that is the fun. Hmm. Mm. Okay. If nobody is particularly inspired, I will just assume that you each found a cocktail on your list that was very much to your liking. And when you're you, when, when you've settled down by and large with your drinks, you are also each handed menus. Even Flitty gets a tiny menu and <laughs> peep peep peeps up at the uh, uh the human woman who is uh, waitressing is going, I like to share theirs. If you're sure, little dragon friend, yep, I get the best of all possible worlds that way. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. And yeah, you get less a bread basket than a breaded trough because there's all different kinds of bread there's some of the cheese bread there's some of the garlic bread there's some of the garlic bread with cheese and there are various other kinds of seeded and differently shaped bread so like pretzel rolls and things they basically seem to want everybody to have their choice and all things considered, they seem to be expecting at least one person to want to try everything. <laughs> Immediately turns to his. Oh no, I was looking at I was looking at Barnabas for that one. <laughs> oh, that's also fair. It's one of, he, he had the moment of everyone look at Hazel, don't look at me. Everyone look at Hazel, don't look at me. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, no, um, Alice a was very much looking at Barnabas through the whole time, so it's like if we look at Hazel, don't look at me. Catches Alice a, just, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he likes his food, and this is this is the the the, the best place. I yeah. I am watching you enjoy yourself, and it's good. <laughs> Have one of those. You would like one of those. All right. And you do get a particularly nice warm uh, pretzel roll. Mm. Probably doesn't even need butter, but they have some of that too if you want it. Everything is surprised me. Everything is surprised me. Everything is surprised me. Uh, to be <laughs> fair, on Hazel's menu, not everything is surprised me. There are a few things that uh, Hazel has never seen, probably because they know that she wants to be surprised quite often. But there's a couple of the dishes that she liked most in various places that she's traveled, and a couple of favorites from Hearth Home. See, that hits curiosity. That's got to be attempted. The hearth home ones. Uh, and Alice is just... Mm. Uh, Darwin, however, I wouldn't. What if it ruins the home one for you? Would it? Could it? Well... Maybe. I mean, if this place is the best eating place on the continent... doesn't change that the home one is still home. Yeah, but I wouldn't risk it personally, but that's just me. Besides, how can you not go for Surprise Me in the best restaurant on the continent where they have tailored their entire menu specifically to you? I 
deficit, you're right. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, clarity in um, in the spirit of Lindira is living vicariously through her D and D character does get a fair bit of shellfish. Um, some some spicy, some not some non-shellfish spicy dishes and a fair few things she hasn't heard of but can tell that they have those elements in them just from the names. Verida is getting a couple of things she remembers from uh, from her parents cooking and a lot of stuff that is very tailored to a dragonborn's palate. Rylan's is remarkably simple except for the fact that he doesn't recognize three quarters of what's on the menu <laughs> sounds about right oh well, that's the thing it's like you have some things in the elven wild that rely on different kinds of uh they rely more on campfires and ground ovens and they probably don't do those here and if they can't do it properly, they won't do it at all. <laughs> so there's only a couple of things that, that, that they recognize and everything else is. Now Barnabas, his shimmers for a minute because it's clearly trying to figure some shit out. <laughs> it, well, if it's reading, trying to read where he's from, that's a little different. <laughs> but it works. There are some things he's had since he's arrived in Elon. There's some he doesn't recognize, and there are a couple of very home-specific dishes. Oh. And Remy and Ava get more or less the same thing, although it's easier for uh, easier for them because they don't they didn't start off in Ravnica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, it takes Barnabas a minute because uh, they don't know the names that Ravnica calls those dishes. So you're kind of having kind of having to figure it out from the name and what it says. And these ones don't have a little symbol next to them at all. <laughs> Although you kind of figure at this point that they'll probably get one if if they if they wind up cooking them and it's liked enough to stay on someone else's menu. Hmm. I'm adding to their classifications. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you would be. Hmm? Interesting to see what they do with those, hmm? I think I'm going to have to go with something like that just to see. Fair enough. And, you know, maybe, uh, maybe Ravnik and Cuisine will catch on. There's already part of it here, given what's localized in Egref right now. Uh, well, not even just. I mean, remember there was that spot with the, 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 the pierogies and the borscht and everything. Mm -hmm. and yeah, your your waitress turns up and I mean just a basic. Are you going with surprise me or are you going with something from home or something from home. Definitely something from home. Yeah, he would probably do the same. Likewise. Remy will be surprised. <laughs> got, got, got reminded that surprise me isn't required, so that's mandatory. Dar Darvin also looks a little torn, but then remembers his own advice and goes with uh, goes with surprise me as well. He's gonna go for a surprise. Yeah, Ferda looks conflicted, but I'm going with something from home, not like can be ruined for her. Well, that's the thing. It's a, it's the same reason that uh, Ava, and probably to a point Barnabas uh, did it. It's not something you can go back and go, it's not the same. I can't really 
have the same enthusiasm for it anymore. So, and yeah, um, notes everything down, and at the bottom of the list, uh, draws a line, and that shimmers, and those of you nearest, I'm going to say that it's uh, Farida and Clarity, uh, the, the the two curious ones and one of the ones with the better perception, uh, that notices it that that line shimmers and becomes what's probably the name of a wine. So they were they were serious about uh, the wine being chosen to uh, go best with everybody's food orders. Hmm. And yeah, I mean the uh, probably going to take a little while. So if uh, anybody has. I don't know, like, conversation. I mean, mostly what Alice has got is... I mean... I got more or less everything uh, about what happened while I was away, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Good to know. Um, I'm just trying to think... If, if we've got anything else to pick up on, because obviously we've got Barnabas's date and Hazel's dad. Uh, we were going to look into uh, the Dark Gods. Where, right. where are we with that? Um... Out of character, Farida went to the, the, right. the, the street, uh, but it was very late. And she went away because uh, it was kind of creepy all on her own. And then shit started happening. <laughs> but Alice doesn't know that because she wasn't there. We found a place to look into things, but I wasn't going in there alone late at night. And then... <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Okay. You did the... You did the that was a small thing to do, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's just good to know where we are because with as we're recovering from everything, it's like, okay, what were we in the middle of before everything went batshit crazy? Mm -hmm. See, this is why you need me around. I keep track of the, <laughs> the, the, the stuff that has to happen mm -hmm. in and around the batshit crazy. <laughs> Yay, me! We we should cast a sending to tell Heskin that this one thing has been resolved. Well, we're going to be going there anyway, so well, we shouldn't we do that, that in person? Good point. good point. I mean, I figure we'd probably leave Egriff for last. I mean, it's closest to Baron's Veer, and I figure we're probably going to need to go and see how everybody settled in and figure out what's next. Um, and Calatiel is a whole different kind of gray area than Crayabendis. Calatiel might want to talk at us. Cheerfully, and but talk at us. A lot. Yeah, and throw ideas and give us things to do. Well, I was more thinking... All I was more thinking of the... Uh, and remember, they, they look at everything like a riddle to be unpicked. So I imagine that they're going to go through the uh, political, economic, social, etc., 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 ramifications of everybody figuring out exactly what the governors are. At us. Yeah. All at once. Yeah, because we've known and they are usually a little bit better about you know not info dumping on people who don't at least have a foundation mm -hmm. unless they ask i think you guys have asked up a couple of times not that that's a bad thing just saying i mean uh the 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 incredible transmutation engine uh, yeah, I think he could have got. I think they could have gone on a week about that one. He 
Speaking of ramifications, one thing's been bugging at me since we talked to the governor. How how worried do you think we should be about what you mentioned of um, place, the places they're in charge of being targets now? Can we or, do anything about it? I guess not. Then what is the point of worrying about it? We can't stay here and defend them. We're all really good and we have beaten ancient dragons before, but yeah. I mean, I know that um, at the very least, Vieva Led is very much nudging the next step up from ancient dragon. That in the book. Please tell me that's in the book. Uh, I I don't recall the the name, but if you look at Fizzben's Treasury of Dragons, there is beyond ancient dragons. <laughs> Out of character, great worm. Yes, I thought so, but I wasn't sure enough. I was thinking primordial. No, great, great worm. But uh, no, they get old. They get powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing that we could have done is not oblige them to blow their cover, and we clearly couldn't do that. Everyone on the continent is in danger one way or the other. It's not as if Tima will play by the rules. Well, there's we... that, but I mean, I think I, I'm trying not to be a little uh, Ava's concern, just on the basis that, I mean, yeah, uh, Baron's Veer is a soft target, or they think it's a soft target. Oh, it's it's a concern. It's just something that the some of the governors might need to be reminded of. It, I mean, my my only reasoning for there to be a concern is that Tiamat's focus might shift off Baron's Veer to here, because if they crack this place, they've got the added resources to take on Baron's Veer and the Elven Wild. So it's all down to exactly what she thinks, tactically speaking, the best move is. Both mm -hmm. have their advantages. Considering we're dealing with deific nonsense. Yeah. Well, Can't really I'm... predict it. I imagine that we'll be hearing uh, Kreia Bendis' opinions on that. And y'all Fortinbras, because he's the tactician, isn't he? Yeah. Well, Both of which are terrifying. Yeah, but... But he's still gotta face them. You say that like they're not all terrifying in their own way. <laughs> That's the yeah, thing. I, they're they're all terrifying in their way. It's just that of them, uh, the two that Hazel is talking about not being terrifying just haven't been terrifying at us. Pretty much. Fair. I mean, yeah, Craig Bendis is the one who turned Darwin into a bunny, wasn't it? Yes, and also is the one who is more likely to take Be dragon, f well, to take dragon form to make a point. Oh boy. Mm. Hmm. And did actually threaten to eat people for this. Oh boy. She's yeah. Have to calm down. And she... I don't think she knows the meaning of the words "calm down" in that context. Oh God. Hey, you can just blame yes. the whole. Th you can blame the whole thing on me. I don't care. <laughs> She, she she does not have a chill setting. She has different stages of anger. Out of character. Oh crap! I made Lazel before Lazel was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Lazel's is born entirely out of being absolutely terrified. Bendis is just terrifying. <laughs> anyway, point B. Yeah, I'll say it's just. Yeah, it's... I mean, to be fair, she's probably gonna blame me anyway because I was the one that they first told. Ah. Uh, mm. 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 
So, you know. We'll just have to see what we, what, how it goes when we get there, I guess. Well. They need us as much as we need them. True. I mean, it's not like we outed them intentionally, so that's got to come to something, sure. It depends. Uh, I what I've heard. I remember uh, the 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 looks on uh, Re and uh, Aaron's faces when they uh, told me about how unhappy the uh, governor was. That they told me when they really didn't have any other choice. So I don't think Oopsie is gonna cut it. I come on, Ava. Have you never met? Uh, I mean, you're a noble. I'm sure that there were higher level nobles that were like this. Yeah, probably. You mean probably? Weren't you being groomed to take over? You had to have encountered somebody who had zero in the levels of chill and took everything that could possibly be taken <laughs> as a slight as a slight. Either that or you just, when Darwin is either that or you just weren't really paying attention. I mean, I can relate. <laughs> Not that I was ever going to have to be in charge of an actual manor, but I mean, even, even I got how they be like that. I mean, I, 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 I first discovered my whole bard thing in a party full of them. <laughs> Making them sneeze feathers even accidentally was so gratifying, you have no idea. <laughs> feathers for days. Just glad you didn't somehow turn one into a chicken. No, no, that was that that ocean hag. Remember the sandpiper thing? Yes, yes. Who could forget? <laughs> the multiple instances of polymorph being used against us in several ways, shapes, and forms. Well, I mean, if you're counting me, it's like... I was really just a bunny. I was just a bunny a lot. <laughs> True. I, I, I just mean that there was... There were several cases the first time you got polymorphed by... Pixies. Pixies. The other times involved the hag casting all kinds of transmutation on us. That was just the one. And... Tried to cast it on everybody. Did not actually succeed getting everybody. Out of character. What the hell are you talking about? Polymorph. I vaguely recall it trying. I vaguely recall it trying multiple targets. Not that. One after the other. No, only when concentration on the first one was broken. Yeah, that's I was still sort of following. What I'm at. Yeah, but no, you're you, you seem to be talking about a mass polymorph. Yeah, no, your no, no, wording no, I was is about it like one. Yeah, out of out of, that failed, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. Yeah, I, th I think she stopped when there was somebody that no, because she didn't even have that many uses of polymorph. I think she was casting something else. Right, it was the the. Some kind of a was it the tentacle thing or a different thing? No, I honest I on, I honestly think you were you're remembering the uh, the time I'm she kept three different fights. You are because the ocean hack was the sandpiper, which is hiding in Clarity's darkness bubble, and uh, I'm pretty sure she was the one that countered various of your healing bit, and that was one after the other. Yeah, that was the nonsense that was repeated targeting. There we go. Found it. Thank you. I wasn't even there when I remember the story better than you do. This <laughs> Alice whole comment. You know how my headspace works. Things get matched together randomly, and then the surprise me part happens, and I don't remember anything properly. On the subject, apparently, even if you did not necessarily order them, you do get... Uh, you do get appetizers of a sort. Nope. Which means... See what I mean? <laughs> which does mean that uh, Barnabas does have little, little plate of pierogies. Um, mm. 
that's the thing. Most most people's uh, uh, cuisine doesn't really do starters necessarily, but um, uh, Clarity has a particularly nice shrimp cocktail. Uh, Farida has this uh, interesting, uh, very nicely spiced, uh, paper thin, uh, almost you know, paper sheets of beef uh, piled up nicely on a little bit of uh, salad. Uh, Ava gets the uh, the kind of uh, leek and potato soup that they'd start some meals with at home. Uh, similar kind of thing for uh, Remy, but because she's from a coastal city, in her case it's a cream-based clam chowder. Rylan just... Uh, I know how this is going to sound, but I promise that even in real life, it's good. Um, a nettle salad. Yeah, no, I've had some before. Those are good. Yeah, that's, look, well, the first time I encountered edible nettles, I was a little thrown. So I thought I would just give the warning because not everybody's heard of that. But yeah, you get you get the, the, the you get the kind of uh, nettle and uh, wild. Uh, lettuce salad kind of thing that you would have had uh... hmm. alice has got bits of uh, bits of sushi well there you go then clearly they go all out mm -hmm. and then some <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, Ryland's failing to words again. Okay, that looks interesting. I mean that's that that's a forage salad. We don't do it yeah. for I mean, the only reason I know is because uh, the the people do an awful lot of foraging, so I know a forage meal when I see one. Mm. Wait, y'all can eat those? Yeah. Yep. You just got to treat them right first. You can. Mm-hmm. Huh. And out of character, to be fair, Hazel has had them boiled. They are tasty boiled. I don't, just don't know if she knew you could eat them raw. Well, the more you know, I guess. Yeah. That I don't entirely, but if they make it here, they make it here. That, that I, I I have stopped. Like I said earlier, not asking questions, just rolling with it. I'll say, yeah, uh, cuts a little bit of uh, tuna sashimi, hands it to Woody. Yee! <laughs> <laughs> mm. Tasty. It would probably pick out a piece of potato from the soup. Barnabas will offer a small bit of the pierogi. It, it flitty bouncing around the table and yomping at any <laughs> any bits mm -hmm. that happen to be uh, happen to be passing. Scritch, scritch, scritch. <laughs> See, this is why I like the Sharon. It doesn't seem to deprive you any, but I get to try whole bunches of different things. Very smart. But I gotta be careful because I don't want to spoil my appetite. <laughs> Is there going to be more mm -hmm. coming? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And y'all might be in for a bit of a treat when we do see uh, Cray of Vendus, because I, I know for a fact I'm going to be reacting like I do when I get dr was get dressed down back in the back in the guild, because that personality is about twenty five. 35% of the officer call. I've been there. Yeah, um, uh, I, I'll explain this after I've, I've, I've said what will, uh, resonate with most of y'all. Uh, you're amazing and you're also kind of rich now. That was what Ree said to me when I verbally tore Crayabendis a new one. <laughs> I had just been revived. 
she was going to grudgingly make me a brass arrow, not because of anything I'd done, but just as throwing me a sop or something like that, and I was really too exhausted to give very much of a fuck. So I kind of yelled at her a lot. And then I went back, basically back to bed. Um, and uh, apparently she re she respected the whole thing and said something about how it was probably just as well that I wasn't going to be a brass arrow because having two alpha bitches in one place was a bad thing. And then gave me <laughs> payment for killing the dragon, which is why I haven't worried about money a tiniest bit since uh, since basically properly hooking up with y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so there's Re handing me a bag full of platinum with you're amazing and you're also kind of rich now. Yeah. That meteoric quantity of how much platinum was in that bag? Yes. Pretty much, yeah, which is why I make absolutely zero noise about uh, uh, anybody having having borrowed any. I figure in at least one case it's payment for the diamonds. <laughs> I tease. What? I kid. It's a thing. <laughs> well, I only brought up... I said I only brought it up that you know I'm gonna react that way because it's it's a bone deep reaction for me. There's no I, I I'm gonna not want to snap to attention like I'm getting dressed down, but it's just gonna happen. That's that's cool. Uh, we, that's the thing. The main reason we're glossing past it is we don't judge. And at the very least, you probably aren't going to pull a Darwin. Darwin is just very very interested in his own soup at that point. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's what led to the um. Funification? Funification, yes. Uh, he, he, he started a pushy shovey in the throne room. I'm uh, trying to keep Hazel from getting in trouble when you No, Hazel was trying to remove him from the situation and for the, from what I what, what I was told, because I wasn't even allowed there. If you're not a brass arrow, there's certain places in Alzor High you can't go. But uh, Hazel was actually trying to remove him from the situation before he made anything worse. Because he was already putting his foot in it like uh. nine or ten different ways. Darwin is, I said I was sorry. I am not, I'm not giving you shit for it, but I'm telling the story anyway. Fine. <laughs> anyway, so Hazel is trying to remove him before he does anything else. And he decided to respond to that by putting his hand on Hazel's face and pushing her away. Mm. At which point, uh, if I was told this correctly, which I believe I was, she went full on dragon and roared enough in their faces so hard that Darwin literally rolled like tumbleweed. <laughs> and D Darwin yeah. was just, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, and then they went away, and and they came back, and it was a full council of them via their their various bits of communication device, and Bunny happened, and happened, and happened. <laughs> yes, well, that's one thing we're really glad we don't have to worry about anymore. Darvin is, can I remind you that we're going back to that woman? <laughs> yep, and she is probably going to uh, do her thing at us. At which point Alice says, wait a minute, no, because that wasn't her, it wasn't Kraya Bendis' magic. She's not one of the magic capable. I remember she got that spell from Vieva Led. 
Yeah, she basically called in everyone else's help from the Five Claws. It was probably the only way she could avoid doing what she'd originally threatened to do, which was actually eat you. Mm-hmm. Uh, also not be someone who is talking to her in this instance. I mean, that's fair. We've both given her shit. The difference is that I'm going to continue to give her shit. Yeah. We're... The, the best we can do is just let you and support you do that. Support you in doing that. And none of us are capable of talking shit on that tier. The Darwin is working on it. <laughs> <laughs> that for him. Working on it. I know I'm not that good yet, but I take notes. <laughs> and sorry, uh, Lindira, you broke up a bit there, so uh, towards the end. Oh, just... I mean, I could... I mean, I could, I just don't think it's a great idea. Pretty. Yeah, no, and th that that's cool, that's fine. The difference is, I don't care. <laughs> The verbal bulldozer versus the verbal shank. <laughs> hey, I can verbal shank. If nothing else, I've seen uh, Ree's mother do it a couple of times, so... Mm -hmm. Hey, I take my inspiration where I can find it. <laughs> and Darwin as well, you do keep saying your tongue is a weapon. I said your tongue was a weapon, too. I just... It just needs some sharpening and polish. I know. I get it. <laughs> hey, you've done some pretty impressive things with your words. Yeah, it's Don't just... Yourself short. Thanks. But it's more that, you know... I'd love to be able to do it more spontaneously. I mean, I know I did yesterday, but... I had to write down a whole thing to prepare myself to rip up the whole thing because it was garbage and do something spontaneous. I still had to write everything down, I just didn't read it. I'm working on it. I mean, it's it's a process. It's it takes practice. It's, it's well, it, part partly it's too much noble. You know, I get the wanting to do the the flowery and the thing, and I keep learning. You know, the the, the Moscow and the Alice and everything that it, sometimes you just yeah, you need. Got? Well, you need to not be flowery. Flowery doesn't work for everybody. One of these days, I think we're going to have to ask how um, the twins got through their stuff, given the uh, flowery doesn't seem to be attached to either one of them. It's either the exponential crazy or the blunt force metaphors trauma. I have a feeling that she wasn't always necessarily blunt force trauma it's just when you get to be that age you probably gave your last fuck a very very long time ago especially when you cannot die Baron true god that's still that's gonna throw me for forever you know yeah, still hard to believe they them being an actual thing just just wait. Uh, one of these days you'll find out that we're the next story of that kind. At which point I don't think I'll ever leave Fort Cupcake. I'm sure that you will because you will be wanting to help uh, anybody else who still needs a home. I mean, true, but you, you, you see what I mean when I say that, yes? 
Yes, but it's never going to work because every new person who comes to Heart Home is going to be... Oh my God, you're her! <laughs> I'm getting it already, so, you know... Yeah, that's why I'm terrified. Getting the same thing you get? <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't have been able to do any of the heroic shit I did if you hadn't brought me back to life in the first place! <laughs> and read the other two times. Honestly, it wasn't just me the first time. It was at least partly Remy. Darwin is yes, but I don't think any of us would have actually done anything if you hadn't thought it was somehow possible. Thank you for your help too with that, Footy. <laughs> I just did my job and made the attempt. Flitty. It's told to always try. Flitty bounces up to Hazel. Yeah, but you knew you couldn't do it, but you asked anyway. And you're welcome. I don't mind scritchy, being scritchy, 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 scritchy. I don't mind being green. I still match the bow. <laughs> Bunk. Mm. And uh, we are a little bit past break time and uh, Lindir is getting some knocking. So uh, we'll break now and we'll finish all of this when we get back. And we're back in the uh, midst of uh, very, very elegant surroundings. Boy, I'm glad everybody dressed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very trying very hard to keep manners despite the surprise me aspects. Well, you know, it, it's not even so much the manners part. You're, the fact that you're up mean, it partially means you get a great view, but also means that people aren't being able to really analyze what you're doing up there. Because I imagine that Hazel... Gods, Rylan is probably having a similar issue with the uh, silverware. <laughs> I took one look at this assortment. Went. I'd probably no. Like, would I? Would I be able to like? Yes. Them? Yes, probably. Uh, assuming that you noticed that there was a problem, and yes. I don't think Hazel or Rylan could necessarily hide that there was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have no way of hiding that. I'm loud. And to be fair, Farida is probably in a similar boat because, again, she's not very old. And while they had utensils, they didn't have this many utensils. Mm. Barnabas is probably work your way start in. in, work out. No, out, in out. start, start, start your way out, work, work your way in. I'm sure Barnabas has had to be at a couple of fancy enough things to be like, mm -hmm. okay, I think I remember how to do this. He's more of, I think I remember how to do this, but the trick is to not act confused and no one really notices. <laughs> Which Remy, Remy <laughs> yeah. is probably, Remy is probably very much in the same boat. And Clarity, um, Clarity is going to give me an intelligence check. I'm the science the shit out of this. Well, it's more, it's more, has she read something that would uh, give her some indication of what she should be doing? Yep. Yeah. She, 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 she used to sneak into nobles' homes. She's probably seen place settings and she's read enough things while looking for something remotely interesting that she knows how this works. So at the very least, uh, Ava can uh, rest assured that Clarity has her girlfriend well in hand as far as that goes. <laughs> Combination of expressions of delight and absolute catastrophic error. I'll just use the word that is just start out and work in. So, outside work in makes sense, but why are there so many forks? <laughs> <laughs> because there are generally a terrible lot of dishes. It's a fancy person thing. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Well, I mean, th there's the other thing. I think it's probably rude to press to digitate your fork clean at the table. Mm. If you're even able to do that in the first place. 
I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, valid point. That's the thing. It, from I've I've heard a few people talk at, at the Pixie, and uh, if you're that invested in what your food is like, you don't want it contaminated by even the tiniest speck of another dish because that would throw off the whole balance. Mm. But I will concede the thought process, but I don't make sense of it because I'm just eating it all anyway. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, just just wait until just wait until the palate cleansers arrive. And in point, <laughs> and in point of fact, uh, after the 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 starter dishes have uh, have been uh, cleared away, you get. Instead of instead of actual main course, you get little uh, sherbet bowls with the uh, very pale green uh, sort of sorbet, and not a lime or a sprig of mint, but a bit of cucumber on the rim. Waiter says uh, cucumber sorbet to cleanse the palate. That's what I'm having. I'm lost. <laughs> You're just gonna run with it. I don't. You don't get it, but you're just gonna run with it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So if I try to think about it, but I, I think something's gonna start melting. They take this shit very seriously. I'm just still confused by the whole idea. If the food's supposed to be so good, it can't. It, it, it should be able to stand on its own, regardless of anything else involved. They just go do what they do. It does it's just like if i had put like a little bit of uh, sugar or breadcrumb into your soup it would change the soup still totally fucking lost <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had that thing where twilly is cooking and Miranda tastes it, and they share a look, and Tully puts the most minuscule bit of a certain spice in. in. <laughs> and then Miranda tastes it again, nods and walks away. To be fair, yes. Yeah? Even the tiniest thing can change a dish. Huh? <laughs> Understands. Understands. Still confused. <laughs> Just eat your cucumber stuff. <laughs> and yeah, it it's 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 very light. It doesn't taste like very much, but it does cleanse the palate. <laughs> right. And then then actual main courses arrive. For those of you who have had something from home, um, as I recall, uh, Ava, you wind up with uh, one of those things that they did on sort of special occasions. It was like birthday meal for you. Uh, little quail. Uh, Stuffed with a sort of a herb and bread and apple stuffing. With uh, the root vegetables are roasted rather than boiled the way they normally would be, but that does make them taste better. So it is a much more flavorful experience on the whole. Faraday gets. Northern dragon born specialty. It's again um, nearly completely raw meat from like three different grazing animals. You think it's uh, beef, mutton, and uh, no, you're not entirely sure what the third one is. Normally you only did the two. Uh, done in very clean, spicy bits along with the uh, frost onions and the kind of really weird long skinny potato that 
you got up there. And again, it's it's different than you remember. It's more nuanced than you remember. Close enough to be kind of nostalgic, but different enough to be different. Barnabas gets basically whatever he had at the last birthday before he got yoinked to a lawn. So, very various favorites, and again, it's the flavors are slightly different notes to what uh, the Stumblefinks would have uh, would have made, but uh, it probably keeps it from being too uh, saddening. Mm-hmm. Okay, I recall that Remy and Hazel did surprise me. Uh, remind me, Clarity, and you did, sorry, nodding It does not help. Does that mean surprise me or does that mean from home? Surprise me. Ah, and Rylan is frozen. From home. Oh, damn Your it. camera's oh, frozen my. again. <laughs> damn it. Bad timing. <laughs> I did from home in the what uh, you have is uh, it's probably the simplest looking dish in this entire thing you have a leg of rabbit and various wild root vegetables again roasted uh, again the flavor profile is similar but uh Obviously, they're using slightly different spices, and the quality is, I guess, less gamey and less we forged this. That's Clarity. Nice home indeed. <laughs> Clarity <laughs> gets effectively a really spicy seafood jambalaya. So I got the best of both worlds in insofar as uh, catering to uh, vicarious living and the spicy streak. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's rice and a variety of vegetables and uh, bits of bits of fish and uh, prawns and there's actually you know, whole mussels and things scattered through it. Remy's is kind of interesting because at first look what it is is uh, plate, glass cover, and the inside of that seems to be full of smoke. When the cover is lifted, the smoke is sort of a cinnamon and hickory kind of smell, and what is under it is uh, a few sort of, you're pretty sure, uh, pork ribs, and uh, pretty sure that's duck leg. Not quite goose, but close enough. Um, and again, with the roasted vegetables, but the, this in a different uh, you know, goose fat and a variety of herbs. Hazels. You can smell the spicy as soon as the cover is lifted off it. There is... Uh, it does. It appears to be lamb or mutton. You're not sure. Probably mutton. It's been cooked a good long time, and it's a relatively large shank. Um, but whatever it's been cooked in is massively spicy. Like you can <laughs> smell the spicy. It's a well. There's my sinuses. <laughs> Anyone even who near me is. <laughs> Now a resident of the Empire of Atomic Bombica. Yeah, and uh, that seems to come with uh, kind of like non-bread. A small bowl of uh, sort of a tzatziki kind of thing, obviously, to cool things off. And so it's kind of like you have a kebab, but oh, fancily God. done. <laughs> Your God. (laughs) 
And I just imagine everybody kind of staring at their food, like... Um. <laughs> yeah, kind of hard not to. You do realize it's probably mm -hmm. not going to taste as good cold. <laughs> yeah, no, not a, it, it's spicy enough that we can literally feel it radiating, gotta try. Yeah, um... For Hazel, you do get advantage on this, but you are going to need a constitution save. <laughs> they know oh, this you. This is the first in a long time. Yeah, but that's the thing. They know where your limit is. <laughs> and they wanted to try to hit it as close as possible. <laughs> yeah. You're... Oh, boy. They've designed it to very specifically be wrapped in the bread with the tzatziki kind of thing. Because you just took a nyarmf of it on its own. That was a horrible mistake, but it was kind of a mistake. Oh, we have not seen you do that in a while. <laughs> Okay, Clarity's nudging the tzatziki closer to her. Yeah, I think I think you have to have it in the bread with the sauce and the salad. They're very big on balancing the whole meal here, I think. I mean, to be fair, once you get over the burn of it, it's tasty as fuck. It's probably the best thing you've ever eaten, but it's probably going to be better when it's got its full balance. Can I try that again? This time doing it correctly. <laughs> yeah, now you do not have to make the roll, and yeah, no, this is... This is this is this is you need to know how to make at least something close to this. Yeah, gone from. Oh well, that's good, but I regret to. I can see through time. <laughs> yeah, would probably start digging in first. Yeah, like like I say, it's just different enough not to. The spoiled memories of the times that you've had this stuff before. Just different enough, but it is still probably, in all cases, surprise me or notes from home, the best thing you have ever eaten in your life. They were not kidding. No, they weren't. Oof. Hazel, I regret to inform you that I am running away with this dish. The bitch point, uh, I'll say, thinks about it. Goes, uh, hey, Flitty, because a lot of this was. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if this has all been keyed to our specific taste buds or if it's just that good. You're basically trying everything, so uh, you're going to have to be our, our bellwether on that one. It's all real, real tasty, and I couldn't decide which one was the most tasty. Draconic, because that's the, the default. But I have to admit, I'm kind of probably going to be more discerning about the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Meat and potatoes and veggies are good things, but I just don't want anything to take the place of the Lyra Lady's cookies. <laughs> Very fair. Yeah, but why Barnabas is going, mm, I have no idea. This Barnabas does not speak draconic. No, Bar Barnabas is just like, mm, this is. I figure if we're going to go with something 
Eastern European E for Ravnica, something like it's called Gwumki, or it, it don't ask me how it's spelled, but it's basically a cabbage roll stuff with like some form of meat and rice and filling, and there's like red sauce on top of it. Uh, Would yeah, what... my grand my grandmother makes that. Well, makes yeah. that. But it's also something you can absolutely positively go abs- utterly ham on for getting fancy and, and nuanced with. Yeah. And that mmm was more of just the. He's he's he, he's actually like, he initially starts really digging in, and now he's eating like a food critic to really Get explore all feel. of it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the, the whole... <laughs> it's like it's not as good as mom's, but in a ve- it it is, but it isn't in a different. Mm. It's not normal rice in that. He, he's literally just muttering to himself half the time. <laughs> It was made with a lot of skill, but not quite the same amount of love. So it's a different kind of perfect. Exactly. So. Yeah, d- dinner probably takes a little while to uh, to complete because people are savoring. Um. But Actually taking your time with this one. Well, you kind of have to, because you keep having to make yourself a new... Keep having to remember to actually do that correctly for fear of nuking my face again. <laughs> <laughs> Some really spicy food is like a nuclear reactor. It works best when moderated. <laughs> Most spicy food is like that. It's just Hazel has a different level of moderation than the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Okay, most of the rest of you. (laughs) Remember, I come from the... uh, I spent a lot of time being raised in the place where uh, most of the plant life is incredibly spicy in Mm self-defense. I internally thank Paylor for this tolerance, because this is amazing! (laughs) Well, if you didn't have that tolerance, it would just be slightly less spicy and still amazing. Point still stands. (laughs) Yep. Point still very much stands. (laughs) Okay, for... uh... I'm going to have to ask each of you some, uh, well, a question when it comes to the dessert menu, because the desserts are a little different here. Uh, your your characters in general, um, more chocolate, more caramel, or more fruit? I do not have oh. to ask Remy this at all. <laughs> <laughs> And Barnabas, I hear chocolate. Oh. Car. Hazel. Rip. Rylan. Also for. Ava. Uh, if there's an option that combines both. And that otherwise... Well, which would be the foundation, basically? Probably fruit. But uh, you you said if there was a combination, what would be the other... Oh, sorry. Um, if it was a... Um, there's a thing that combined chocolate and fruit. Yeah. Um, the general indication is going to be that there's going to be some chocolate in it somewhere. This is just what other notes. Yeah, well, uh, fruit then. Farida? I think caramel. Yeah, and so when the menu arrives, it doesn't actually ask you any of this. Um, for 
each of you, there is a list of what appear to be random items. Uh, for clarity, less less items than animals. Specifically, each and every one of the uh, animals that are in your bag of tricks. For Rylan, it's uh, various different bits of plant life. Largely like mushrooms um, and you know a couple of forest critters, the things you find in forest anyhow. Hazel has effectively toys, a uh, chess set, a uh, jigsaw puzzle. Things along those lines. Barnabas has got a uh, notebook, safe, globe. Remy's is more in the line of uh, small weaponry sword, dagger, shield, mace. Ava has more of the, uh, well, hers is a little unbalanced, weirdly. Some are more the noble, tr no, the noble woman's trappings, uh, items of jewelry, shoes, and some of the others are, uh, A cleric amulet. And Farida, hers apparently is a little harder because what she has are book titles. You can make one up when it comes to this. <laughs> Alice is looking at this and going, I've got musical instruments. Darwin is like, I also have musical instruments. What the? Uh. Yeah, the waiter comes back and Yeah, I'm gonna go with the uh, look to them a little bit suspiciously. I'll make this actually no, I won't make this remotely easy. Um, I'm going to go for the uh, I'm gonna go for the fiddle. The violin. Darwin is just, I was gonna be Okay, fine! I <laughs> am going to pick the the, the Wow, they actually have that harmonica thing. But nah, I'm going to go for the guitar just because. <laughs> I mean, I have to go with the Norman, right? So, Badger. Um, I got to go with the notebook. What? Uh, what the fuck are on all of your sure. menus? <laughs> uh, <laughs> items, things. I don't. Things and stuff. It's less like it's less like a menu and more like what you'd find at a rummage sale. Seemingly. Do not ask. Am I the only one who got? Do ask and try to figure it out. You will go crazy. Uh, Am I the only one who got actual fruit? Apparently. Like, just berries? I, no, to be fair, you did not get berries. You got mushrooms, small shrubs, and forest animals. <laughs> you did not get fruit. <laughs> no list involving fruit. Oh. Ow. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Squirrel, probably. Okay. <laughs> Looks at Hazel. 
Somewhere on there was a chess set. Uh, whatever the equivalent, whatever the equivalent from Baron's from Baron's Veer would have been, I'm going for that. Baron's Veer has Baron's Veer has chess sets. Um, so yeah, normal chess, not like a unique form. Yeah, because uh, I mean, Hearth Home has a chess set. Uh, Lenork actually carved a chess set. It's kind of generational. Every every so often, somebody loses a piece, and uh, he just carves a different one, and thus changes the shape of the lineup that way. But the board itself is remade. Looks at Remy. Great sword. Looks at Ava. None of us got normal menus. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you remind me what the list of hers was? There was a... um, basically, it, it balances weirdly between uh, you know, the trappings of a noblewoman, jewelry, uh, shoes, uh, fancinesses and things along the lines of uh, pale or amulet, rope dragon for some reason, um, and uh, bow and arrow quiver. I think I'll go for the quiver. Looking in a ferret a weird direction. Um, you're looking up uh, potential titles, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm looking at like things to get a name. I don't no, even know what it's... something would be about. Like this is <laughs> well, they, they, they would all be research topics of some description. But the, the because Faraday is interested in everything, the subject matter kind of runs the gamut. Okay. If you're stuck on an actual title, you can just say the one about and point. Just saying. Let's see. Uh, hmm. To hook a star. Okay. No idea what it would actually be about aside from stars. But. <laughs> that's, that's entirely fair. And the, the waiter wanders away and after asking like coffee, tea, etc. Um, but obviously whatever blends are going to be chosen to go with your dessert. It takes a little longer than you generally expect, but when it does arrive, hands up who's heard of a Mori Guichon. Uh, the fucking chocolate guy. Oh, right. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh. <laughs> it took it took forever for you guys to figure that one out. <laughs> because yes, you have you have the fucking chocolate guy creations of everything you asked for. <laughs> Remy's has an actual fucking sheath. <laughs> yeah, Rylan. What did Rylan actually go for? A oh, squirrel, right? Yes. Squirrel. Yes. The animals are remarkably detailed. The books surprisingly actually open. If you peer at the bindings a little, you will find that there is. Uh, You've got to be kind of gentle with it because uh, it's less stitched than, uh, you know, spiral notebooks. Mm -hmm. There's fairly sturdily done chocolate spirals that are allowing pages of uh, chocolate and uh, light caramel, respectively, to be turned. Wow. And yeah, Hazel has a complete edible chess set, pieces and all. <laughs> just sort of a manic sort of giggle. It's amazing. I was actually saying to Smeagol the other day that uh, 
basically Amori Guichon is uh, from Ambir and uh, spent some time studying in Agref and then came back <laughs> to do this shit. With ideas. Meanwhile, B. Dylan Hollis was born in Agref, came to Ambir, uh, developed a very interesting respect for food, and now travels the continent uh, looking, you know, trying all the old weird recipes. <laughs> Either way, yes, you have you know, the insides are obviously very much uh, catered to you know, various favored fruits if you did fruits, caramel if you did caramel, more chocolate if there's chocolate I mean, Remy's is by and large chocolate, there's a sort of a <laughs> Sort of triple chocolate chip cookie kind of thing as the actual mm. blade for this thing. So, <laughs> yeah, most of this is relatively large. So, uh... Darwin. I feel. No, go ahead. I feel a little bad about eating Norman, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess maybe we shouldn't, those of you, those of you who picked animals should not have picked animals. <laughs> I mean, all mine were animals, though. <laughs> that, that, that's entirely fair. It's... <laughs> yeah, well, I guess too many people had books. I don't know. <laughs> I admit, I would have been so curious as to what the jigsaw puzzle on her menu would have wound up like. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Darvin is just, this is so neat. It is, isn't it? <laughs> so, I wonder if I can get the name of the guy or girl or person who did this. I mean, it's got to, I mean, it, it, is it more than one person? Did they study an egg wrap? What? Alice says just, they had to have studied an egg wrap. One way or another, whether they did this through equipment or magic, either way, this is Egref bullshit. It mm -hmm. screams Egref. It really does. They're digging into Norman's head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'd probably pick. Is, is it just a quiver, or is there arrows in? The quiver? Uh, there, there are individual arrows in the quiver. Yeah, I mean, every every <laughs> single bit of this is edible, and every single bit of it looks like it shouldn't be. <laughs> it looks so real. How? Uh. Talent, equipment, and magic, probably. Mm. Shenanigans. Some kind of shenanigans. <laughs> because the problem with Faraday's is that there are actually uh, uh, chocolate inked words on the pages. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. It is, uh, it is a I mean, because it, cause the pages aren't paper, paper thin, um, they kind of had to summarize, but uh, it's an interesting, uh, uh, interesting look at the uh, Circle of the Moon Druid. So it's, it's sort of to do with stars, but not really. <laughs> but it's one of those... Eat it or read it. Like Willy Wonka's palace in that uh, in India. Sort of thing. <laughs> oh, actually, I need to. I need to. Yeah. No. Um. It's the thing with Barnabas's notebook that they did not say on the menu. Is that it also comes with a spun sugar inkwell filled with dark chocolate ink and an edible quill. 
<laughs> he could theoretically write on that fucking thing. Uh, all right. I'm going to write on the first page, and then I'm going to eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the one place this falls down is that the strings don't pluck. They are they are sponge sugar, so they are they don't have the resonance. But beyond that, is wow. They're all very impressive. I mean, the the dinner was great, but you got to imagine people would come here just for the desserts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that uh, seems... No, go ahead. That seems correct. I, I We really need to, next time we're in Agrav, look at the eatery district, because if they learned to do this there, there must be something similar. We should have a look. But before yeah. we do anything else, uh, pushes her chair back a bit, stands up, and offers Remy a hand. Can I have this dance? Yes. <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, Alice and uh, Remy take the floor. And I would like Remy to make me a performance check, please. <laughs> Sorry. Good thing she's bowed and. <laughs> Oof. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Um. Thankfully, uh, very thankfully, Alice is a bard, mm. and she does not only manage to look really impressive, but she does manage to make Remy look marginally good, at least after the first time Remy stepped on her foot. <laughs> Would you like to try that again with advantage because Alice is helping you? <laughs> oh, Alice is very power much helping. Of love. You. <laughs> the power of love wins. True love's <laughs> grit <laughs> strikes again. <laughs> Let me just <laughs> <dip. Deep>. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's like. Well, we didn't really get the uh, too much slow dancing at the actual wedding. There was too much going on. Yes, yes, there was. But it was worth it. It was. And now I'm going to snuggle and enjoy the moment. <laughs> and show off a little bit. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> and that, 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 that's them busy for a song or two. Now I'm wondering how much attention is on desserts and how much attention is on couple. <laughs> error, error, error. At the couple <laughs> or the dessert? Attention split. Error, error, ah. error. Somebody needs to. Having difficulty focusing on one or the other because both. Somebody just needs to shove a pawn in her face. At this point, basically, yes. <laughs> nope, you're on your own, apparently. Well, Erda <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> uh, is reading a page of the dessert and then eating it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Darfin Dar is. Darvin turns around to Ava and goes, the only reason I wasn't getting involved is because I, I thought that maybe Hazel's error face was uh, she wasn't sure about asking Clarity to dance. <laughs> I wanted to see how that panned out, but you got her back on, on the chocolate now, so... <laughs> and trying to... And, and as a result of thinking... And a thought process went to chess game equivalent, so now I'm trying to ch chess together the words. I don't essentially wanna... like tactically figure out what the hell she's supposed to say because she glitched out. Clarity, do you want to save her from this? <laughs> Clarity's <laughs> moving pawns like, and like 
like doing a little that thing with the rook and the the king and switching them around. Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Processing, processing, processing. Stand up, yoink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want you both to make me a performance check. About to fail so badly, but at least it's adorable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, not, that one. not that one. Not awful, but funny. <laughs> yeah, the, the clarity is 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 matching up with Rem, with Remy and Alice briefly, but Hazel was not exactly that way inclined. So you wind up with just the slow dance kind of uh, thing, which can basically make anybody look good. <laughs> Aww. You're cute when you're flustered. Hazel's head through. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that I believe was you're cute when you're flustered. Meep. <laughs> cute. Yeah, that's going to continue for a bit. <laughs> just watching them. No. <laughs> Darwin just sort of uh, looks at Barnabas and being. <laughs> and, uh, now I'm starting to wonder if eating at like the best restaurant on the continent was a great idea when you're having a home cooked meal with special lady uh, tomorrow. Um, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. It's you, you obviously like her, so uh, you're gonna want to react really well. Mm -hmm. Then again, she's probably gonna make something different because unless you got way luckier than I thought you did, she doesn't um, know Ravnica conditions. Uh, I'm doubting she's gonna do anything like this either. Um, the consultant actually. She speculated on possible things she could make, depending on how she act, it, how she feels about me. It would be be in showing in what kind of food she makes. So I'm really looking forward to it. Ooh. Okay, that's. I may need to speak to this consultant just because I'm curious now. Yeah, out of character. What was her name again? Fe Svetlana. Svetlana. Uh, yeah, her name is Svetlana. Shops. Is uh, Street of Love direction somewhere? Yeah. It's so what what are you hoping she'll serve you? Um, apparently, if she puts her pulled pork in front of me, that's uh, is about as good as you can get. Why pulled pork? Because it takes so much time to make. So they're going by the time and the care mm -hmm. they're taking. Okay. The time okay. and effort really, really seems to you know, be a thing, and it's fascinating, actually. So it you can borrow the book. You can borrow the book I bought on it if you want. Oh, I, I'd, I'd love to. It's just, I mean, I should have guessed. And gestures at the remnants of, uh, of, of, of chocolate cake guitar. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, I mean, we honestly all should have guessed after the whole. Mostly my freak out about what the food was in the jail because you you've been arrested before, Darwin. You know this ain't no, that ain't normal. <laughs> okay, but thankfully, well, okay. I I mean, I know I have been arrested. I uh, we've all okay. My, half of us have been arrested before, mm -hmm. but never actually been in jail long enough for them to feed us until here when they just feed okay. everybody as a matter of course. Not right, that I would have eaten anything in the Star Coast jail anyway. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I'm trying to get at. Is even if you haven't actually been fed there, 
Prison food is proverbially known for being as about as not edible oh. as something that is edible could be. Well, yes, but no, that's not the reason I wouldn't have eaten anything in the Star Coast Jail. It's that uh, people were getting tainted by the black shit there at the time. Oh, okay. There were barrels. Full. You're mm. dancing. Yeah, sorry about that. And Darwin, <laughs> Darwin is like, yeah, I mean, they, they did actually have barrels of the stuff under the manor. No. I mean, you, th you think you think that's bad? We accidentally tripped over uh, them trying to do the same thing in Belarus. Mm -hmm. That was Alice's parents. Mm. You know. It's... Yeah, I mean, they were kind of assholes. But comeuppance. I... Serious mm -hmm. comeuppance. I mean, Alice's father tried to kill her. She cut his head off. Well, he tried to kill her when she was 13, and then he tried to kill her again, so shunk. And then... I mean... Froseth cracked her mom's skull. Which was good, because it got her back from that banishing thing. Hmm. Okay. It was quite the fight. It looks sort of apologetically at Ava. Sorry, Ava. It's not your fault. <laughs> oh, no, but still. And I know you wanted to help. I found other ways to help. You know, also, random thought. When Remy and Alice get back, somebody remind me, if I don't, to ask them... Where exactly they got like the painting and lockets and things done? Cause that something we need to look into for tomorrow too. Yeah, I figure after a, a couple of dances, uh, Alice and Remy will come back and it's like, okay, what did we miss? I did have a question for you, if that's all right. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, you're my you're my read in. Uh, yeah. Right. I, it, it's pretty simple. Um, the uh, I know you, you and Remy had some like painting and whatnot done. Where did you get that done? I, I realize I need to stop in there tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, notebook, not the chocolate one. <laughs> Writes down the address, which is not actually all that far from uh, from Svetlana's or the bathhouse. Uh, that's where I had the portrait commissioned. Uh, you're probably going to be paying through the nose if it's a I'm, if it's a, if it's well, a rush job. Well aware, and if if I need it, it'll be worth it. I'd rather have it and not need it than not have it and need it. As well, and is that more of a warning than anything else? Because you know, mm -hmm. sticker shock on occasion. I mean, I. You might be able to leverage my name for a discount because uh, the mm. what I got was uh, on mostly I got what I got uh, by promising that she could uh, actually uh, show the finished portrait mm -hmm. in the gallery, you know, right in the front window, apparently. <laughs> oh, yes, because you you would actually would have passed by that. Oh, oh, right, that's that place. Okay. Yep. I mean, you gotta admit, well, she does good work. Very good work. The portrait is amazing. Oh, well, she had longer to work on it than I expected her to have, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. but, you know? And we are getting to about that time, so is there anything anybody wants to do before the evening comes to an end? Continue being Barnabas is good. B sorry, continue being what? Continue being adorable. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Hazel exists. Hazel and Clarity exist in a constant state of adorable. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, um, it's uh, not a bad way to uh, end an evening. And if nothing else, it has managed to. Uh, 
distract Hazel at least a little bit from uh, uh, potential uh, from having to figure out what she's going to do about uh, Biodad. And keeps That's Barnabas true. from uh, yeeing too much about uh, upcoming date. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Good fun all around. And in two weeks' time, we will start meandering in the general direction of meetings with various uh, uh, governor types. But first, uh, a few more personal bits and bobs. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.